Welcome to Shift Happens, where we discuss all things yoga, creating transformative experiences on the mat, off the mat, and on the path of yoga, with your host, international yogini Mimi Adeogba. Hi, welcome to Shift Happens with your host, Yogini Mimi, where we discuss all things yoga and experiences on the mat, off the mat, and on the path of yoga. So on today's show, we have fellow yogini Alice Romanoff, and she's here to share with us a little bit about herself and tell us, who are you? So tell us a little bit about yourself. (laughs) I am 19 years old. I will be a junior at Wake Forest University. I'm studying sociology with minors in neuroscience and possibly dance. Um, So movement has always been a part of my life. I've been a dancer since the age of two and a half, and I really let dance wow, consume two. me. Yeah, I've been dancing my whole life. It's, it's who I am. That's um, awesome. But as school got more intense and I was focusing more on my academics, it was just getting too competitive and too stressful. So my junior year of high school, I tried a yoga class. You know, I liked it. it I didn't practice regularly, but that was my introduction into yoga. And how old were you then when you started? So you were in high seven, school? 17. 17. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. and it was, it was a transition out of dance. I still dance now, but it's definitely not as intense and not as regular. And So it sounds like dance had a, a particular impact on your body. Is yes. That, yes. What was the impact? Um, well, it, it taught me to use my body and to know my body, mm-hmm. which is priceless, but... Essentially, it is very debilitating, mm. and I think a lot of dancers don't exactly know how to take care of themselves. Uh-huh. And at that age in high school, I wasn't taking care of myself. And I, so I'm really glad that I found yoga, which is all about taking care of yourself. Um, and at, in college, I, I continue to dance, but it's kind of taken a turn for me, so I'm focusing more on movement in all stages of life. Uh Um, And I've been working with children, with kids with autism, but my main work around dance has been centered around research where I teach dance, improvisational dance, to patients with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. That's powerful. Do you do that here in Atlanta or in Wake Forest? At Wake Forest. Oh, that's Mm -hmm. very impressive. So it's a collaboration between a neuroscience team and the dance department. So it's been amazing to be a part of that and to teach the dance classes as well as look at the MRI scans and see the way the brain lights up differently Mm -hmm. after only a few months of dance. Wow. So movement is who I am. (laughs) Okay, so you've been moving all your life, (laughs) basically, (laughs) summarily. (laughs) That's awesome. That's really, um, I'm impressed, or rather, I like to say inspired by your story. (laughs) So now you've taken yoga to the next level for your own practice. You've been practicing since 17, so what's that, the last three years almost? Mm -hmm. So you've had a chance to explore for yourself. So share with us, in your own words, what is yoga? To me, yoga is about self-discovery and self-love. And even the way my definition has evolved, I think, is demonstrative of what yoga truly is. Like many others, I used to think that yoga is about the physical practice, about getting toned and learning how to hold poses and achieve the perfect posture. But through my own journey, and especially in this past month, I've really come to realize that it's about releasing judgment and just acceptance and taking care of your body, training your mind, most importantly, and seeing the different effects of it manifest in all corners of your life. It's about being at peace, about finding the dualities between movement and stillness. It's about self-discipline. That's a huge part of it for me, and patience. Um, So it's really a return to balance or homeostasis, and it's a journey towards the union of the mind, body, and spirit. It's beautifully stated, Alice. And you mentioned that this awareness has been heightened over the last month. Mm -hmm. So um, Alice is a graduating student of the Atlanta Hot Yoga 2018 Summer 
yoga teacher training course, and this last month she's undergone this really intensive training with us. So this is what you're talking about when you say over this last month, mm -hmm. this, this teacher training course? Yes. Well, I'm sure our viewers, our listeners would like to understand what is a yoga teacher training course. So now from your perspective, will you share with us what you understand from your experience a yoga teacher training course is? Yes. So I did the 200-hour training in a 28-day intensive. So this might be a little different than other weekend courses or abroad courses, but it was basically, I like to think of it as a mindfulness boot camp and a self-discipline boot camp. So the hours were pretty intense. We started at 7.30 every morning, but I live an hour away, so I'd get up at 5.30. We did cleansing practices. Every morning we meditated. We did two hours of asana or physical practice in the morning and then later in the afternoon. And we studied and explored anatomy and physiology, philosophy, history, methodology. So it was really, immersive and well-rounded, and I think provided a perspective that perhaps not all American teacher trainings offer, because it was very immersive into what yoga is from its origin, from its root. And sometimes it was weird, <laughs> but this, this experience was about open-mindedness, and one of the quotes Mimi uses is putting everything you learn into a pending confirmation folder. So now I have this vast body of knowledge and I'm figuring out for myself what sits with me, what doesn't, what I want to take forward with me. Um, so it's been, it's been really amazing and it's been, it's been challenging. It's been indicative of what the path of yoga is. There's, there's nine obstacles according to Patanjali's Yoga Sutras and all of those obstacles arose within the past month. But, you know, <laughs> accepting them, being aware of them, and trying to push past them, that's what it's all about, I think. Very beautifully stated. So, um, what would you say was the highlight of your last 28 days? Teaching. Teaching. <laughs> An hour ago. <laughs> so, um, it's something that I wasn't sure I had in me, but it feels very natural, and I think it's one of my own favorite expressions of my voice because finding finding my voice has been something I've been struggling with recently but when I'm in the studio teaching it seems very natural and empowering to myself and to others. So for our listeners, the last 28 days culminated in Alice teaching her own 60 minute class, a yoga class and it was imbued with her own authentic style, whatever she wanted to express in it, with some requirements. You know, I asked them to make sure that they included certain elements of what they had been learning over the last 28 days. But for the most part, she had free range, and using her expression in this way is what she's speaking to now. When you went through that experience, how long did you keep track? How long did it take? Did your class take? It was just a little bit over. It was effortless, though. Yeah. <laughs> it was so effortless. I mean, she just got on the mat, and she just was in her zone. 19 years old, folks. 19 years old, and she had a cool command and confident and poised throughout the entire expression. So my hat's off to you, and may your journey as a yoga teacher just be abundant and beautiful and inspiring other people. Thank you for joining us on this and sharing with us your feedback. I would also love to hear what was your low, if <laughs> you don't mind. <laughs> I'm getting up in the morning and giving up caffeine. But I haven't had coffee in how many days? 26 days. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yes. So I feel amazing now, but the first few days did not feel amazing. <laughs> I bet not. You, know, you mentioned that all nine of those obstacles came up on the path in the last 28 days. I was like, so what was your low? Yeah, obstacles. <laughs> so thank you again. Is there anything else you want to share with our listeners? Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> You've been listening to Shift Happens with international yogini Mimi Adeyogba. To learn how to build your own yoga brand while creating transformative learning experiences for others or to listen to past episodes, go to yoginimimi.com.